Do you think that home insurance is just another expense? The truth might surprise you. In today's video, we're gonna go over coverage and why you need it, tips to have lower insurance, and we're here with an expert today, Kathy Leger, my friend here in Texas with Leger Insurance. She's gonna be giving us some real facts, no BS about everything insurance. So the first question is, why is insurance even necessary? My answer is because the lenders are requiring it. Now, that's kind of like me saying to my kids when they ask me, why do I have to do this? Because I said so. So you, you wanna have coverage. Now we're gonna talk about if you own your house free and clear, you really don't have to do anything. You can self-insure. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of that. But if you are obtaining a loan for your home, you've got to maintain insurance for the replacement cost at all times. So we're gonna dive right in. We're gonna ask Kathy a couple of questions. We are gonna get to the real facts, no BS about insurance and why you need it and how we can save some cost. Okay, Kathy. Why is someone at risk if they don't carry homeowner's insurance? Great question. The biggest risk when you do not have homeowner's insurance is just one thing to keep in mind, total financial ruin. And what I mean by that is without homeowner's insurance, there's no transfer of the financial burden that can happen should something devastating happen to your home. So you have to make the decision, or sometimes you're required to accept the decision, that for a small, small amount of premium, the insurance company is agreeing to pay a massive amount of money should you suffer a loss. Without that agreement in place, what you're essentially saying is, I know I bought my house the first time and paid 500000 for it. I'm willing to do it again. If it burns down or something else outside of my control happens to my home, I'd do it again. And mathematically, that just doesn't make sense. So whether you own your home outright or whether you have a mortgage company, it's very important to make sure that your home is insured so that you can have financial peace. There are some risks that you can control that may happen to your home, but more often than not, it's going to be a natural disaster. And for that, we just don't have control over it. So for the peace of mind and just the mathematical sense behind it, it's always a good idea to cover homeowner's insurance. So Kathy, the basics of a homeowner's insurance policy, what does it actually cover? Yeah, so three big things that a homeowner's policy is gonna cover. It's gonna cover your home, it's gonna cover all the stuff inside your home, and then it's gonna protect your wallet. And what I mean by that last one is, there's also liability concerns. When you're a property owner, when you're a homeowner, there's the chance that someone may be hurt. And should you not have coverage for that, you are financially liable. So that homeowner's policy protects you should you suffer damage to the home, should you suffer damage to your stuff inside, or should someone be hurt and then be seeking damages from you and your family? So Kathy, there's a few different types of homeowner's insurance policies. Could you just basically go over what those, what those are? Yeah, so basically it comes down to the different types of properties that we have. There's the standard single family, standalone home, um, where the owner lives in that home, and that's just a homeowner's insurance policy. Then there is um, a property that is owned by someone, but then someone else lives in that. So of course that's a rental property and for that we write landlord insurance. Then there are condos um, where the um, insured is only responsible for fixing the inside of the condo unit. Um, and then lastly, there are townhomes. And townhomes are essentially a homeowner's policy, but sometimes there's adjoining walls and perhaps the insurance company doesn't have to replace the exterior on all four sides of that townhome. So those are the four main types of properties. The first two are based on who's living inside the home and those last two are based on how much of that property the insured is responsible for. So we're gonna talk about choosing the right insurance policy, homeowner's insurance policy. We'll just pretend for right now, single family residents. So last year, actually, I shopped my homeowner's insurance policy. I've lived in my house at that time for nine years and I've seen my policy creep up every year. Now we did have a claim early on, so that was kind of understandable. My fish tank exploded. 
boohoo in my house. Uh, we have a fish tank in the wall, but that's a whole other story, whole other video. But basically, you know, we saw all of a sudden last year in 2023, we saw my insurance was like gonna go up like by 30%. So I got busy and called a lot of different insurance carriers. So Kathy, when someone is doing that, what do they really need to look for? And I was successful by the way, but let's hear what we need to look for when we're shopping policies with other carriers. Yeah, so the single most important thing when you're going to shop your homeowner's insurance is you have to understand what you currently have. There are times that a client might call our office and not really even know what type of policy they have. Is it a condo, is it a townhome? Um, and then they may not know if it's an open peril or named peril apparel, admitted, surplus, all these different things. If you don't know what you have right now, then you can't shop um, to compare. It's very important that you have a good understanding of not just what type of policy you have, but what are your deductibles, what are your coverage limits. So that's the single most important thing. For that reason, we actually won't, in our agency, complete a quote for you until you can produce that proof of insurance. And that really comes down to you have to know what you have. If all you're doing is calling around to see who can beat the premium you're holding in your hand, um, it's very dangerous and it's pretty reckless. You'll want to make sure that um, you're really understanding what you have and then truly doing the work, as you mentioned, Jen, to make sure that as you're getting these quotes, they're not cheaper because they're less coverage. We want them to actually just be uh, less expensive. So Kathy, what are some of the big things that affect a homeowner's insurance premium? So premiums are directly tied into the claims history of the house, claims uh, record of the client, um, the location, the size of the home, the age of the home, um, other physical characteristics like the age of the roof, whether or not um, it's an older roof or a newer roof is a real important topic here in our coastal cities. Um, essentially, so many factors about the house and about the person themselves um, and then other things that you can't really control like the location of the home um, the profit loss you know how many claims are they paying out in this zip code uh, it will certainly directly affect the premiums as well so Kathy that is great information thank you for summarizing it in plain language for us insurance is so misunderstood and when it comes time to do it, it's really important. So these tips are awesome, thank you. So now we're gonna go into mistakes. I'd love to let y'all know some of the biggest mistakes I see so that you don't do the same thing. So this doesn't accidentally happen to you. So as a lender, I, we of course have to have people bind insurance uh, before closing. So the biggest mistake that we see is people waiting too long into the process. A typical closing is about 30 days. So when you're under contract, when you're in that inspection period, et cetera, it, you've got to get on that, in my opinion, right away. I'm sure there's about a hundred things that people would rather do than shop for insurance. But what happens if you don't do it early on is that you're uh, you know, close to closing, you're scrambling, the premiums that you're getting quoted are too high and you don't have time to triage and really properly shop around. And you know, you may not know this, but insurance companies, we're seeing more and more, they're visiting the property, sending drones, doing some research even before the house closes. And we want to let time for that to happen so they don't cancel you later on. We've actually had some homeowners where they got had to get insurance too quick and so the inspection was done after the home was purchased and they actually got canceled. So don't put yourself in a position where that happens to you. Please get on it right away and shop for that insurance early. So Kathy, now I'd love to know from your perspective, what are some mistakes that you see people do when they're quoting insurance, whether they live in the home yet or not, or are just purchasing? Yeah, well, I'll definitely second what you said. I think the closer, the shorter the timeline, I think sometimes uh, definitely with our clients as well, leads them to sometimes make short-sighted decisions. I'd say one of the biggest, um, I don't know, maybe mistake is a strong word for it, but focusing too much on the premiums. And I don't mean to say that premiums are not important, they are, um, but there are times that a client is uh, for perhaps calling and saying, I have a quote for 1500, can you beat it? 
sure, I can cut the whole thing in half and charge you half the premium. So we can't just solely focus on price. Again, it goes back to, are we gonna pay now or pay later? If you're focused so much on bringing price down and that's your number one priority, um, you know, it's gonna end up being a loss of coverage and it could cost you a lot of money. I also think a big mistake that people make, and we kind of touched on it earlier, um, is the, your deductible choices. It is very easy for us to just increase a deductible to drop your premium, but are we really thinking about the fact that you can't even file a claim until the loss exceeds twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars, it's a lot of money uh, for first-time home buyers. You've just closed on a house. There's a lot of expenses that you've had to pay up front. So six months later, to have your roof blow off in a hurricane that you can't control, it's pretty detrimental, or it could be uh, a huge financial impact for you. So we just really want to think about um, when we're increasing our deductibles and just not be too frivolous with that. And then I'd say the last thing is probably just not asking enough questions, not getting a real good understanding of what the policy covers. Now I'll be the first to tell you if every single client that we quoted asked all the questions that they should, uh, we would ha I'd only have time to talk to maybe two or three in a day because it is um, a really complicated product. Homeowners insurance has a lot of different layers to it. Um, so it is tough to get all those questions out, but just so important to interview your agent, make sure that they're doing their due diligence to give you the best um, at the lowest price and hopefully save you some time along the way. And then um, just ask for their counsel. In my 20 years, I can absolutely tell you the claims I've seen more often than not. And I think that might help you as you make your decisions. So Kathy, thanks for that info. So in your experience too, is it worth it when you're researching companies that should people like do reviews, look for reviews online? Like do those things really hold any merit? Like when you're, when you're knowing what questions to even ask and you're wondering if this company's reputable on paying claims, et cetera, I mean, where do you suggest they even find questions? Like even me being in the business, I didn't even know where to look really, to be honest. I didn't, I didn't really know what to ask. Unfortunately, reviews, um, online reviews, when it comes to something like insurance, it's really hard. As a licensed professional, um, when I read things that are negative um, about a, a claim experience that somebody had, I know um, why they didn't get paid or I, I know the policy, how it reads, and I know what they're saying. And so I know the limitations of the contract and why they couldn't get paid the way they wanted to. So, so often when we see negative reviews about a company, it's because they either didn't get paid what they wanted to be paid in their claim, or perhaps they didn't get paid quick enough. And truthfully, I'll put both of those faults on the communication from an agent. If you don't have an agent a personal agent working for you. You don't have that friend, essentially, that you can call and seek counsel for. Um, whenever we have uh, one of our clients uh, experience a claim, there's only one person I want them to talk to in our agency, and it's me. So a big part of that is really understanding what happened to the home. And if it isn't a covered peril, because not all damage that happens to your home is covered, and I'll be the first one to tell you that. Well, if you went on, you know, getmyinsurancealone.com, there's no one to help you understand exactly why it isn't covered. So again, having an independent agent who is able to steer you from one company to the next and really explain what those 85 pages say, um, if not in the beginning, then certainly as you experience a claim, there's just so much value to that and it can save you a lot of frustration. There are plenty of times in my agency that I have to say, I'm really sorry that happened. Unfortunately, that isn't covered. Let me explain why. Um, and then there are times that even in a claim, I have to say, okay, based on what you've just told me, we would not want to file the claim. But perhaps if we um, say it this way or present it that way, um, it might change the outcome of that claim. So there's just um, a lot for you to know um, when you are making these decisions. You know, Kathy, you bring up a great point. I think what I really want y'all watching, uh, and thanks for hanging in there with us, by the way, share this with a friend that might, might need it as well. Um, 
the the big thing that I heard was having an agent that's there on your side. There's so many companies out there. I really recommend that you get some referrals to people in your area that are close, that are family, friends, colleagues. Um, you know, some of the national companies that are arm's length, they're just that. And are they going to be for, there for you when you're freaking out at midnight when your house is like on fire? I mean, I hope that doesn't happen to you, but I think that's really super important. Um, now, you might be wondering what how does insurance affect my mortgage payment? Uh, so we've got another video for you here about insurance and what is part of your mortgage payment. So you want to stick around and watch that. And I want to thank Kathy for being here with us today. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed having you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.